We start with a room. The room is the purple area. It's a sealed room. You can't get, nothing can get into it or out of it. And up in the corner of the room is a little bit of, maybe a lot of, a lot of molecules, gas, all stuffed into the corner of the room. Now, I want you to tell me which of the following two little movies makes sense as physics and which does not. Okay, so here we go. That's one. Here's the other one. I don't believe that will ever happen. Most of you don't believe that the air in the room will also rush into the corner. So what's going on? Well, we usually blame this on the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics says that entropy always increases. And if you know just a little bit about entropy, you will know that the entropy of a room filled uniformly with gas in thermal equilibrium has a high entropy. And when all the molecules are stuffed off into the corner, it has low entropy. Entropy in increases. End of story. Second law of thermodynamics tells us which film is correct. The clash of principles, the conflict of principles. The second law says that entropy always increases. Newton's laws of motion, and for, pr for practical purposes today, I don't want to introduce quantum mechanics, but quantum mechanics also says the same thing. It says that the laws of physics, in particular Newton's laws, are reversible. Let's remind ourselves what that means. What it means in the context of a very simple example, incident, oh, here it is, in the context of a simple example, is that if a ball can roll, a frictionless ball on a frictionless surface can roll from one point to another in a certain amount of time, then Newton's equations say that there's another solution in which it can roll back to the first position. Therefore, there cannot be a quantity which always increases. If it increased going this way, it would decrease going that way. There can't be Boltzmann's effort to find a quantity in mechanics which always increases was doomed from the beginning. And people told him that, incidentally. He struggled with it. Okay, so that raises the question then, what is entropy? What is it that seems always to increase, despite uh, what Newton might say about it? What's the meaning of the second law, and why is there an arrow of time? Okay. Let's begin with what entropy is. Entropy, according to Boltzmann, in the end, when he finally understood it, is hidden information. What does it mean that information is hidden? Well, in the practical example that he was thinking about, a gas, Information is hidden because it's contained in a collection of degrees of freedom which are too small to see and too numerous to keep track of. When information is contained in too numerous a set of degrees of freedom, too small to see, that information is called entropy. Let's take an example. Here's an example of 64 coins. Now, neglect the fact, ignore the fact that they're on a lattice. That's not the important point here. I had to draw them some way. So here's the 64 coins. They might just be in a bag. They might even be invisible to you. Uh, but uh, there they are, 64 coins. And there, each coin has two faces. One face is red, one face is blue. Here's a special configuration of the coins in which they're all showing red. How many such configurations are there? Well, the number is right over here. There's one such configuration. It's rather special. Incidentally, if you saw it, even if you didn't know where the coins were, as if you saw those coins, you'd recognize it instantly, easily recognized. Here's a configuration with one blue coin. It's less unique. There are 64 of them. Let's just, here's another one. And there are 64 of them all together. You might not so quickly recognize which was which if it was flashed in front of your eyes. 64 configurations with one flipped coin. How many with two flipped coins? Well, you can work it out. It's 64 times 63 over 2, and the answer is 2016. The numbers are going up fast, rather fast. Here's another one, three coins. 41,664 configurations with three coins. I suspect if I flashed that at you pretty fast, you would not be able to tell me afterwards which three coins were, uh, were flipped, but maybe you could. Here's four. The number is six, better part of a million. 655, or whatever, uh, some large number. That's how many configurations. Notice they're going up really fast. How about if half the coins are red and half the coins are blue? This is a kind of generic situation. The numbers are vast. Two times 10 to the 18th configurations. Supposing you were just to pick a configuration randomly, what would you be likely to pick? You would be very unlikely to pick one, you would be extremely unlikely to pick all reds. 
picking them at random, you'd probably pick something like this just because there are so many configurations like this. The technical definition of entropy for an ensemble, a collection of states, for a collection of discrete states of a system, like the system of coins, is this, that the particular ensemble, it's a technical word ensemble, but it just means a collection of states that are somehow recognizable in some way, recognizable or not, is the logarithm of the number of configurations that satisfies a certain criterion. Okay? For example, the state uh, with one flipped coin, with no flipped coins, there's only one state, log one is zero, it has no entropy. And you go down, the entropies rise, not as fast as these numbers on the left, but the entropy goes up and eventually reaches a maximum. 